Hey, little gay boys and girls and fag hags and straight boys who sneak and watch my videos and love me too. Yes. Um, today, we're going to have a discussion. We are gracious enough. Uh, we have two guests who are gracious enough to join us today for a discussion on sexuality and spirituality. Um, we have Doreen and Reggie Jackson. Uh, they're a pastoral team, um, and they go around to different churches and evangelize. And so today they're going to be talking to us about, uh, I guess, homosexuality and the black church. So first of all, thank both of you for joining us okay. on the show today. Right. It means so much. Um, so I want to say this. Um, I, I guess pose this question to you. How do you feel about uh, homosexuality in the black church? It definitely appears to be prevalent, although we realize that God loves the individuals, but maybe not the acts that go on. Okay, and for you? Well, my take is it is. It's very similar to hers. However, uh, it's, it's beginning to spread, and people are, are beginning to accept it. Right. And uh, I don't think, uh, this is my personal opinion, that it should be accepted. That's why I differ from a lot of preachers. Um, but I believe that they all should be accepted in the church because it's our job to say, okay, this is the truth about the subject. This is how it should go. Uh, we preach repentance. If you have a problem uh, with any type of lifestyle that is not according to the Bible, we preach that um, you have to allow God to deliver you from it. Okay, so basically, what you guys mean is that you all support gay marriage, right? No. no. <laughs> Absolutely not. We are very much against gay marriage. Well, this is what I want to know. Now, you, you all wouldn't stand in a pulpit and preach against gay people. No, we don't preach against gay pre We preach against uh, uh, gay uh, uh, acts or the gay lifestyle. Now, we'll preach about the gay lifestyle being a very great sin and abomination. Right. Now, a lot of people feel like being gay is a lifestyle. And I feel like a lifestyle is something where you go out on the weekends and you party. Or a, a lifestyle can even be something like healthy eating or something uh -huh. like that. Or, or poor eating. Like, they're different. But I don't feel like it's a lifestyle. I feel like it's a love style, first of all. Okay. And I feel like it's a part of who you are. Just right. like, you know, being black is not a lifestyle. Right. You can be a part of hip-hop culture, but I don't think that that means it's necessarily a lifestyle. Well, let's step back once. Okay. Let's see. Okay, how did, did, were you born gay? When did you become gay? When did you realize you were gay? And how did that come about? Well, when did you realize you were straight? I've always been straight. When did you realize you were gay? I've always been gay. So from a child coming up, at, from entering into the lifestyle, you were gay. Well, there wasn't an act in never, your life that led to that choice. Well, there was no, Well, actually, first I tried to be heterosexual. And so I accidentally fell into a vagina one time. And it was... It was it was scary. It was it, it scared me a lot. Um, but when I first had my first boyfriend, like, and I always knew that I was attracted to guys. It's just like when I was little, there was actually this one guy who was in my class. I was in kindergarten, and um, there was this, I was a snow queen at first. The snow queen is I was a black guy who liked white boys. So I was in kindergarten, and there was this little boy. His name was William, and I used to do all his arts and crafts for him. And so um, I knew other little boys wanted girlfriends, but I knew I didn't want a girlfriend. And so I would ask William, I would say, um, you should be my boyfriend. And he would be like, no, I used to be like, you should be my baby. And I would be like, you should be my baby. And he'd be like, well, can I have your arts and crafts? And I'd be like, no. And he'd be like, well, you ain't my, well, I ain't your baby. And so that's when I first knew. Um, and I felt a lot of pressure growing up to be heterosexual because, of course, in the black community, exactly. we put a lot of emphasis on masculinity right. um, because of the image that uh, that was put out about the black man, especially during times of slavery, okay. of a man, yeah. you know, who, mm -hmm. who was beaten and all this type mm -hmm. of stuff. So, of course, you know, and hip hop culture does something completely different, mm -hmm. you know, to the male image. So we as African-Americans, whether we're in the church and we subscribe to hip hop culture or not, we have this big 
idea of masculinity that, that involves, you know, you can't be gay because it kind of takes away or deters away from the image of what the black man should be. Okay. So was okay, there me, a single say, one say. event in what, your what, life what, that on, led buddy. to hold that? On, hold on. What we also preach, and what I preach, what we preach, is that being gay is a spiritual thing first because everything is spiritual. Okay, well, is and, being and heterosexual you, can, can a spiritual I, can thing? I, can, I, can I describe, uh, explain what I mean by that? Demons are sent into people involved in a gay person's life just like if a person is a murderer. If a person likes to kill people, many times that person is demon-possessed that is the murderer. You take the Gacy's, you take all these mass murderers, most of them are demonically possessed. What we preach and teach is that being gay is like being an alcoholic, it's a sickness. Because when a person's alcoholic many times in churches, what we do is we'll cast the alcoholic demon out. So we take okay, it more so. as a spiritual thing. Uh, more so a spiritual thing other than a thing of growing up. Because when you was five years old, you mentioned five years old, am I correct? Mm -hmm. You had no idea what gay meant. You didn't know what sex was. That had to be something to come into right. your life that gave you that type of feeling or that type of mindset. So what we preach, and specifically me, because all preachers don't preach this, is that when people are gay, they have what I uh, what I call gay demons. Now in the Bible, it says so demons. So the demons walk around like, hey, I'm here to attack you because Satan sent they're, me out. They're invisible. Okay. And just like sicknesses, when Jesus cast out and uh, healed many people that were sick, those sicknesses came from demons, if you read the New Testament. Right. You turn the New Testament pages, there was a deaf and dumb demon. You turn... Uh, when Jesus said the woman was bound for 18 years, it was a spirit that he had to cast out. A lot of times, Jesus and the apostles cast out spirits. Well, and spirits I... carry sicknesses. They carry, uh, you know, people that are, are, are violent, and all those come from spirits. Well, I feel like this. I feel like a lot of African Americans, particularly, I feel like we're so spiritual that we aren't able to recognize the human condition. There are some people who get so heaven bound that they're no earthly good. So if you take away the idea that these things, and this is another reason why a lot of black people, you know, we'll go to church and have a pastor pray over a heart condition, you know, and die of a heart attack next week or be in and out of the hospital. But some people are able to say, well, look, maybe this is not a demon. Maybe I just need to change my eating habits and maybe I just need to start taking my black behind to the doctor. Okay. You know, so if you take away the idea that it's a demon and this is really a part of human condition, you know, um, you know, just like if a person is angry, it's a mental disorder. You know, it's something that occurred in their life because that's something completely different from sexual orientation. <clears throat> Just like a gay person can be violent, a straight person can be violent. So if you take away the idea that this is based on uh, a demon invading their body, what do you have this to base it off of? Is this all spiritual? Well, it's spiritual most of them. Let's say a person has a heart attack. Well, maybe the demon influenced them to eat a lot or not take care of their health and all that. But that's not a demon that gave the heart attack. They just didn't have a healthy lifestyle most of the time. Okay, so if okay, a demon so, didn't give them a heart but, attack, but let, how could a demon make me gay? Because that if if it was it's a movie that came out, um, I forgot the name of it, where um, Mark Wahlberg played it. He saw these, you know, spirits and all this stuff. You know, where they took this type of drug, and everybody. We'll give you an example. I was on a bus. I was on a bus about oh thirty five years ago. Or no longer, 37 years ago, I just gave him my life to Christ. And I was on a bus and I asked God, why? Well, and there was some gay people on the bus. I could tell it was two or three of them. They were acting up on the bus. Not all gay people act up. They just were. They were young and everything in their 20s. And, you know, you got thugs and hoodlums and everybody acting up on buses. And I thought to myself, I said, and I asked God, I said, what causes people to be gay? And he dealt with me about Then a spirit came on my body. And I said, oh, great. And I had to deal with that for about a minute. I was standing up. The bus was crowded. 
So that God, that was God's way of teaching me things like that 36 years ago, about 36 years ago, because I've been a Christian 37 years. So you say a spirit there. came on you, what type of spirit? It came it? on me. It was invisible was spirit. It, was it a gay spirit? Or it was, was it? a gay spirit, and I felt all the, all the feelings that a gay person would feel. Now, that's hard to understand because it is a spiritual concept. But that's the first thing you got to deal with. It's, a, it's, it's like it's like an alcoholism. It's like a drug addict. Uh, we believe that it's a sickness or a spiritual sickness. Now, everybody's approached by growing up. Every male, uh, I believe, because they search for people. They search for homes. Jesus talks about that in the Bible. When the house is uh, totally swept garnished and swept and the, the spirit comes out of them and then it returns, he brings seven more wicked spirits. It's all a spiritual concept first. Then the next thing it is, is what is taught in society. We have to accept it. That's what society teaches. Why? Because society is controlled and ruled by Satan. Lucifer. And then after you break him down, he has billions of demons of all sorts. Right. Well, I want to say, ask you this. So, <laughs> taking away the spiritual aspect of it, because I feel like religion has caused a lot of uh, divide within the world. There are a lot, like it's called uh, segregation, a lot of people, right. slavery, a lot right. of people based slavery off of religious uh, ideologies. And, um, you know, um, and there was and women. You know, a lot of uh -huh. people still don't believe that women should stand in pulpits and preach. Uh -huh. And so, in the same way, the Bible has been used to justify the oppression of gays and lesbians and transgender people. And I've had a friend who was stabbed over forty-two times in the yeah. name of Leviticus eighteen thirty-two. Right. This type of stuff still goes on, and people base it on their religious ideas. So, taking it away from that, I just want to ask you this final question: If I can go to a job. Uh -huh. uh, I used to work for UPS uh -huh. um, and then I do stand up comedy now and I stand yeah. in front of all kind of different audiences uh -huh. but <clears throat> if I can go work for a company that says you know we accept white people, black people we accept people on the basis of sexual orientation, uh -huh. sexual identity uh -huh. and we will take care of not only you but your partner as well right. why can't I go to God and say the same thing say well you know God you're my God you're my maker uh -huh. I should be able to come to your open table okay. if that's the case I need to be worshiping UPS okay yeah. baby you want to ask for that sugar I, go I, ahead you okay. can ask the reason is is because God accepts certain things he doesn't accept certain things uh, he doesn't accept murder he doesn't accept rape he doesn't accept homosexuality in the Bible is abomination but we love you. I will never hit you. I will never stab you. I will never be mean to you. I will never hate you. See, you could come to my house. You could sit at my table. You could eat with me. Could I bring you, my boyfriend too? Well, yeah, because okay. I, I want to preach to your boyfriend too. Because I'm a preacher. <laughs> I'm going to preach to your boyfriend. I'm going to preach to you. And that's our job. That's what a Christian's job is. We can't accept it. But... We have a, a, a different opinion, but we still have to love you. We can't hurt you. We can't exclude you from a job. If I'm offering you a job, I'm going to hire you. Okay? I'm not going to say, well, you're gay. I'm not giving you this job. No, I'm going to hire you. But if I'm your boss or whatever, then, you know, I might think about talking to you about Christ, but not necessarily your gayness. Because I don't usually deal with that unless I'm confronted with it. And that's why, I'm, you know, I'm dealing with it. Okay, well, I want to thank you two in final words from the wife because he just been talking and talking. Go ahead. And go so ahead. We, went, we went. I just want to leave one thing with you. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. When you come to Christ and confess your sins, he's faithful and just to do what? Forgive you Forgive of your sins. Forgive you to sins. work in your life, but also... It said that whosoever, and so in whosoever believeth, it didn't say straight black men, straight black women. It didn't say straight white men or straight white women. It said whomsoever. And so in whomsoever, I feel like that means gay, lesbian, black, white, Jewish, Gentile, and everybody. And I feel like there are no exceptions. But one thing, repent. 
The church is to preach repentance. God would accept you, but you have, have to, to turn repent. away from your sin. You have to repent because you just can't accept. God's not going to accept everything and everybody. There is a division. Jesus said, I come to divide, <laughs> not to get people together. He said, I come to bring war. I come to divide. He said that because he can't accept everything. You can't even get a job. Oh, I'm going to do this job my way. It won't work. They say, you're going to abide by our rules or this job. You can't do it your way. You do it UPS's way. <laughs> exactly. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> so, again, I want to thank both of you, even though we have uh, vastly opposing views on this issue. I still want to thank, and it's, of course, we as Christians, all as Christians, we call ourselves Christians. Um, of course, to show love, and even though we definitely have different opinions, I feel like we definitely showed each other a lot of love here yeah. uh, today, which yeah. is most important, so we have to remember to do that. So this is definitely a conversation we need to continue to have amongst ourselves in our churches, and y'all know how I feel about it. If you're in a church where they're bashing gay people, take your gay and lesbian offerings and walk up out of there, okay? <laughs> um, and so I do want to thank y'all for coming to the show. Okay. Um, and thank y'all so much. Okay. Um, please subscribe, tell your friends about what we're doing here, and we love you all. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, and remember, Jesus loves everybody. Everybody. Jesus is love.